In this episode we'll focus on improving our character. We'll add different animations and camera. That will let us match the style of our game, as our current character is only this orange rectangle. That we can move around. But it would be nice to make it a real walking character. Let's close the game window and here in this level 1 scene we've got our character body 2D. But at this point it will be nice to clean this scene up. We don't need this character body 2D because we'll create another one from scratch. Also the same goes for this color rectangle as it was our background before we've added the tile maps. So we can delete this one. And a good Godot practice is to keep those things separated on a different scenes. So here on level 1 we've got the tile maps and to make our character separated click on this plus icon and we've got a new scene here on their node and we'll use as our parent node or root node character body 2D. Hit ctrl s to name our new scene and we can name it player. But this time instead of adding color rectangle we'll add different node. That is a new one for us it's animated sprite 2d hit enter and we've got a warning on this animated sprite 2d that we need to add the resources to it here in the animation and we can click new sprite frames click on it again the panel will pop up from the bottom and in the sprite frames we've got the animations list. So click on this plus file to create a new animation. And we'll need a lot of those. But remember that you can have as many as you want. In my case, I will need eight. We've got four idols and four walks. Let's start with idle down. Here click on this grid table and click assets, tile map, character. The new window will pop up and while you're holding control and scroll, you can zoom to it. That's our character and those are his animations. Our character is 16 by 16 pixels, so in the size we'll need to provide them. And you can see that the grid is actually split up perfectly for our use. We are in the idle down, so let's click this one and this one add two frames and we've got our first animation. Let's zoom a bit here. You can play it to see if it's actually playing and it is. But in here our character is very sharp and in the game it's blurred. And this fix is pretty common because it's most of the news with the pixel art games. So click here project, project settings and in this filter type textures. We've got rendering textures and default texture filter. It's currently linear. We need to change it to new rest. Close. And as you can see, our character is very sharp again. And what's left for me to fill all of those animations with the frames from character PNG. That can take a lot of time, but the effect will be very nice. So let's start from the top. I do left, click on the grid, character PNG, zoom, and here we've got only one frame for idle, it's this one, add one frame, and at this point you can try to fill all of the other animations based on your current knowledge, and if you're done or if you're stuck, then come back and see how I fill them. Okay, but we are starting. Idols were pretty easy, but for the walk down, we can use a little trick to make the animation more smooth. And to do that, we'll copy this frame and paste it as the last one, because that will give us the result of our character moving his legs and arms. We can see, and yeah, that looks fine. Let's try the same with left, right and up. And here is the final result. Idols are very simply, often even one frame, but walk is nicely animated. Great! And before we apply those animations to our movement system, here on this idle down, let's make it our starting animation. And because it will be the first animation on the start of the game, we need to hit autoplay on load. 
We still got a warning on character body 2D and that is again that we got no shape right now. So let's click on it, add child node, type collision shape 2D. We need to select the shape. We can again make it rectangle. And instead of doing something like this, from the shoes to the top of his head, we'll make collision more suitable for top-down games. And that is to make it like that. Just the square for the bottom part of our character. And that will be very useful in a few minutes. But for now, let's jump to GD script by clicking here on character body 2D, attach script, click create, and we can copy the logic from our previous file. It's here on the left, you can pick this, copy and paste it here to the player.gd and we can remove the old file character body 2d. Let's delete this one. And as you remember from the previous episode, here is the logic to move our character in this if condition. And in else condition, we've got the logic to stop the character from moving when there is no button clicked. Let's jump here and let's create another if statement. If character direction.x is less than zero, and character direction dot y is equal zero. That if conditional is here to determine if our character is walking to the left because his direction on the y axis is zero and on the x is negative. So he should be moving to the left. So we've got a condition, but how can we change the animation? Click on this animated sprite 2D, that's the node that we have put our animations on, drag it and drop it in our file while holding control. That will create this line on Redivar animated sprite 2D and that's the reference to our animated sprite node. So we can copy this, paste it here and dot animation will equal walk left. And that's because that's the name of our animation that we have set up before, walk left. So we need to create the same for every animation. We can copy and paste it four times. This will be walk right, this up and the last down. So to walk right, we need to check if the X is greater than zero and still we will require Y to be zero. And to walk up and down, we don't need this part. Change those two to Y. So to walk up, we will need our Y to be less than zero and down to be greater than zero. Let's stop with only those four animations because I want to show you how it will work in our game. And remember that we don't have the character body 2D node on our level one, which is our main scene. You can see that it's empty. And to add our player scene to this scene, we need to click here and pick player scene. And on coordinate zero and zero, we've got our character here in this corner. Shuffle the node's position a bit. And to achieve the final effect, we'll add the camera to our character body 2D. Here, a child node, camera 2D. And you can see this camera as this purple line. And it's way too big right now for us. Click on the camera node and in the inspector, you get the property that is called zoom. And I bet the right amount will be five. Let's select those two nodes with control and drag them somewhere else, maybe here. And let's try to run the game. Our character is being animated. And when we click left, it works down, right, and up. The animations are changed properly, but we still need to add the idle animations. Close it, go back to the player scene, script, and here in this else, when we don't click any button, will add idle animations. This first line is okay because it makes our character stop when we don't click anything and we need to add the animations accordingly. So another if statement, animated sprite 2D dot animation equals walk left, then our animation should equal idle left. And the same will happen for every animation. We need three more and that's it. Okay, let's summarize this process. When player doesn't click any button, we go here into this else statement, we reduce the velocity to zero and zero, which means that our character will stop. 
and the animation that was used before. So when we stop holding the button, we for example use left button, which means that will fall here into the walk left, player stops holding it, it falls into this else statement, and in this if because the animation before that was set to walk left. And that means that we need to change it to idle left. And the same for every other animation. We can save it and run the project. Walk down, pause the button, and the idle is down. Right, and it's idle right. Left, and up. So when we stop holding the button, it changes the animation to idle. You can see that the idle down is animating very fast. And that's the same with other animations. We can adjust the speed of every single keyframe. So here in the player, animated sprite, and on this idle down, we can change its FPS to 1, for example. Other idles are simply one frame, so it won't change anything. And for the walk animations, we can set them to 4. And before we see if it's okay for us, I'd like to remind you about our collider. Take a look at its current shape, that it's only covering our legs. Okay, so run the project. The animation is better because it's playing very slow. Same for the right and for the left. Perfect. And what about this collider? If the collision shape was adjust to our head, our character won't be able to move close enough to this fence because it's top-down game. And when the collider is covering only our legs, we can move very close to it. And that's fine, as it represents that the character has some dip to it. Later in the future episodes, we'll create the same, but from the other side. Because right now, our character can't get close to the fence from above. As a small adjustment, let's go to the script and change the speed from 9000 to 3000. And in my opinion, it looks way better. We're slowly reaching the point that we can call it a game or something slightly similar to it. And the main issue right now is that our game lacks the purpose. We can just move around and there is nothing to do in this world. And in the next episode, I'd like to give our character a certain purpose. So make sure to subscribe and click on the next episode.